what do you get when you have an extremely talented video game developer leave his position at a AAA development team, known mostly for high-budget action games, with hundreds of millions of US dollars of funding? Papers, Please is an indie game released in 2013 that was developed by former Naughty Dog employee Lucas Pope. It markets itself as a dystopian document thriller. Papers, Please is unlike most other games in that winning isn't glorious. Let me explain why. The whole game is about working a border checkpoint of an impoverished communist nation sometime in the 1980s that is somewhere east of Germany and west of China. Immigrants line up at the inspection desk and hand you, the player, a bunch of paperwork. It is the player's job then to check for discrepancies, typos, and forgery. After violating some of their rights, you either let them enter or send them back home. And well, that's about most of the game's mechanics summarized in 10 seconds. For the most part, all you're doing is sliding papers and stamping them, similar to a real job. However, papers please, so what are essentially very gamey elements, like how naturally smooth it is to move the documents across your desk with very satisfying paper sounds, make the game compelling enough to not elicit the boredom someone might get if this was their real job. As the game progresses, the rules of the game change as the nations adopt more or different restrictions. Thus gradually, more and more paperwork builds up on your desk. It becomes a second hidden objective to simply keep your desk as free from clutter as possible to ensure maximum efficiency. With more paperwork comes the increased chance of messing up. If you mess up more than twice, a supervisor comes and docks your pay. Now how does money come into play in this game? In Papers, Please, all the money you make at the end of the day goes towards supporting your family. Whether that is for buying your kid medicine when he is sick or simply for food. This is where the ethical implications of your fake video game job come into play. So how well you follow the orders of your superiors each day determines how much money you make for your family. This gameplay mechanic compels players to follow the rules of the game and not just screw around. However, whether or not to allow someone in is not just a black or white simple question sometimes. By choosing to always abide by the law, the player will inevitably selfishly choose to force those who are simply trying to escape poverty or war to turn around. Sometimes, the player will allow in a husband who has the required documents, but will separate him from his wife who doesn't. The player might inadvertently help traffic illegal prostitutes simply because they have the required document. On the flip side, the player might allow in a radical suicide bomber to enter the country simply because of false pleas. The almost robotic utilitarian choices on the players and carry huge emotional weight for those simply looking for a better life. Except those people aren't real. Everyone in this game is essentially just a bunch of zeros and ones, no more fake than the characters in a book or movie, and yet they are still able to have a profound impact on the player. So what if when the player allows his or her emotions and moral standing to interfere with the choices? Well then, Papers, Please becomes not just a document management simulator, but instead becomes an experience where processing documents is more exciting and stressful than it has any right to be due to the conflicting moral and monetary pressures at hand. Eventually, the player is met by a resistance movement, and then has to also juggle with the hard choices of allowing in diplomats and spies, which all have profound impacts on the country if let in. A lot of the time, these people are willing to bribe the player for entry. So what is there to stop a player from just coldly following the rules of the government? As the game progresses, it becomes apparent to the player that it is impossible for the player to actually make enough to keep his family alive without taking bribes. In fact, eventually, the criminals start giving you more money than the actual government. When corruption is the only way to take care of your own people, the game raises some very serious questions about what is right and what is not. But what is really profound is that the player never actually sees his or her fake video game family. There are no flashy graphics or visuals to represent the player's family. Instead, the family is for all intents and purposes simply text on a screen that tells you how well they're doing. And yet, the game somehow gets the player to care enough about the status of these words to create a simple yet compelling central game mechanic of doing whatever it takes to keep the family alive. At this point, the player realizes that the government is inept as fuck. The player is undermanned, overworked, and severely underpaid by its own government. What loyalty does any government deserve if it can't even keep you and your family alive? The game's many different depressing endings are all dependent on how loyal the player is to the communist nation. 
This is why I think games like Papers, Please are some of the defining moments of this generation. To think that a simple piece of software is capable of producing such fierce human emotions as frustration, anger, and helplessness is mind-boggling. Through new, emerging technologies, on even a stage as small as a border control desk, one of the greatest political satires can be born. That being said, should all video games be in-depth, intelligent sources of social commentary? Of course not. Most games are still wacky and stupid, as they should be. Games excel on other fronts as well, such as being power fantasies, or epic adventures we read about in fairy tales in our youth brought to life. Games can be the perfect competitive battle of wits and dexterity. Games can be realistic historical simulations. Games can be a Lovecraftian horror. My point is, games can be about a variety of different topics, but in the end, no matter what the message of the game is, games are really just for fun. So if you play games, great, continue just having fun. If you don't, also great, because it means you actually have a life. By the way, I hope I have proved that sometimes video games have something more to say. Even the ones which on the outside look like you're run-of-the-mill, dumb, and overly violent war fests.